You know how you're thinking of the next set of nails that you're going to do. Color is such a huge part. In fact, color is a huge, huge part. And sometimes you just can't find the right shade in acrylic or gel, whatever you're looking for. But you might have it in some of your other makeup. I found it in my eyeshadow. And I created these. It was the exact shade I was looking for, and I found it in this eyeshadow. I'm gonna show you how I come up with it and the different looks you can get with the different bits in there. Let's get started. So I ran to my little table where I have all my makeup and I have mostly browns and golds and creams and rusts, which is great. But I was in the mood for like a, like my shirt, like a robin egg kind of soft, smoky blue. That's what I wanted. And I did find the eyeshadow that'll get that done. But what I learned was when I mixed it together, how different it can look. Would I mix it in the monomer? Do I mix it in the powder? And I learned different looks to do it. So I've got a bunch of little jars and we'll try different ones. My goal was to make it as smooth like my shirt, robin eggs type of blue. But you can see in the photo, the speckles really worked for me. I actually really like them. So I'm going to do one solid. So I'm going to start with, no, actually we're going to start blending the color first. So just get yourself a bobby pin or a toothpick or anything that can give you your color out of the, you know, break up your eyeshadow. That's what I did. I just kind of broke it up and I didn't like it because it was coming in chunks. I mean, you're already starting with a makeup that's cosmetic grade that you put on your eyes. So putting it in your nails won't be a problem. It's the blending factor and how much you put in, will that be a problem? And it means if you put too much in, as we had the chemist on our YouTube channel a little while back, a few videos back telling if you put too much, it can compromise the uh, strength of the product. So we don't wanna put too much. And I do gonna add a little bit of the blue. I think I did that too. I like the dark too, just giving you that smoky look. But I really liked this color. And I think I added a little bit of this. Okay, now I think I can still use that because I didn't like, you know, you don't want to double dip it. So I'm just going to mix that up. And I'm going to put a little bit in here because I want to show you what happens when you put it with the monomer and what happens when you put it with powder. Now I'm gonna put some with white powder. This is what my white acrylic powder. And I'm gonna do a whole hand, so I need a fair bet. And see how it gets into the chunks like that? Well, at first I didn't like that. So what I did was I got me drill out and I do recommend wearing a mask with this because anything that makes your powder more airborne like filing, e-filing, hand filing, it gets into the air and you don't want to be breathing that in all the time. So do wear a mask when you're e-filing, hand filing or mixing <laughs> your powder. And I found it to be very effective when you took your little e-file and you literally blend it like that. See that? And you just want to blend all those bits in there. I like those little bits and I do want to show them to you, but I did blend this one and look how much, if you keep blending it, how much it worked quite well. It's quite, quite pretty. But I want to leave this because I want to show you if I mix it with the monomer and how different that can look. I'm going to pour a little bit of monomer because every one will give you a bit of a different look. You just have to decide what's working for you. We're little chemists now. <laughs> Sometimes I would mix special colors for clients that they wanted a specific. Some people can be extremely uh, picky which is great, I'm not criticizing, but they can be really picky, particularly what shade they're looking for. And colors are a real special thing. You really wanna nail down the right color. So let's get some tips here. Got my new square tips. Okay, so let's get 
some monomer, get my brush saturated with the monomer. Let's get a little bead of eyeshadow bits. Bits that are not really that blended. And look how it gives sort of a, a very marbly look. And the more you pull, the more marbled it became. Very cool. I really, really like that. I don't know if the camera's really picking that up. Oh, it's looking nice. Really cool. Let's get a little bit more crumblies in a separate dish. We're just going to make sure that we've got some extra crumblies that we can add. Because like I say, my goal originally was to make it smooth, like you can see on the one finger, but then I really liked the speckles. So let's just have those just in case. Okay. So before I do the set, I try to play with it a little bit to see what kind of effect I really like. Okay, let's try clear monomer with some white with a little bit of, see how I just dabbed it? Sort of gives a real contrast between the two. See that? I quite like that. You can even swirl it. It's like marbleizing it. Very cool. So I'm not looking for a shape or anything. I'm just looking for the patterns. And so the more you play with it, the more you're going to mush it together. But it gives you an idea of what you can do for the look. So you can mix all sorts. You can mix it in your powder, mix it in your monomer. So I would suggest don't mix too much. And to be safe, to make sure you've got the strength of that nail, because that's always what we're seeking, is the strength first. Strength and structure first, and then beauty and art second. My nails are pretty prepped, uh, they're pretty naked. There's a thin layer of acrylic on there, but I just wanna buff it one more final before we apply some acrylic. Okay, I'm gonna do it on a low speed because I'm buffing the natural nail area. Like I say, these were pretty much prepared. I just wanna make sure that they're nice and buffed up. And I'll do this with every finger. Now we're going to dust that off completely. And I'm just trying to buzz through this stuff because I want to get to the design. I'm going to put my lips prep and let's bond on real quick. And I do have a thin layer of acrylic, but not on the whole thing. So I did want a little bit of, I want some bond on there because it's not completely, there's a lot of natural nail oh, exposed. I guess I can take this off now. Don't need it. Okay, let me rest my fingers on a tube. Okay, so I'm gonna form each and every one up because as you can see, I have no nails and I am gonna make them on the longer side because I want to show off the eyeshadow in my acrylic. <laughs> I'm gonna do a couple of Frenches, I think. Okay, so let's get, get that form on there. Where's my brush? Okay. I know I'm making kind of a mess, but you know what? When I'm trying to design something and figuring that kind of thing, I really do make a mess. Isn't my table upstairs where I do nails a mess? Oh, it's a disaster. That's probably the cats been... are scared to go in there. The cats are scared to go. Yeah, and they like messy rooms. They do like junk. Okay, so I am gonna do one or two French, and I'm also gonna do 
most of them, full nails. Whenever I, whenever I put color acrylic on the nail bed, the nail plate area, this area here, not the free edge, I always want to make sure I have a nice thin layer of clear or nude or pink or something like that first, because when you want to take it off, you do not want to file all the way down to natural nail color, that is. If you leave a thin coat of clear or a nude or pink or something that's natural colored to the nail, you won't notice it as much if you leave a little bit. Like there's lots of nude and, and clear and pink on these nails right now, but you can't see it. If it was black or blue or red or brown, you would really see the bits that I've left over and it would look horrid. It also hurts to file it down to that. So to prepare yourself, you kind of got to think a step ahead. To prepare yourself thinking ahead when you've got to remove these, you'll wish that you had a thin layer of something down, like a neutral color, before the color began so you could file the color off down to that little clear thin layer of something neutral because you would have saved a lot of grief for you and your client. So I am going to do that for every single finger. I'm going to put on this index finger here just a thin layer for protection because I am going to put a full color. And when I talk about a thin layer, I really, really mean a very, very thin layer. Make it very, very thin, okay? Actually, that's a little too thick. <laughs> I'm trying to do this upside down for the camera and it's maybe not a good idea. Maybe I should do it the other way. Now for the French one here that I'm gonna build, I'm gonna extend it. So I'm gonna use my foundation pink so that the color is, you could do it this way if you like. See how that color is um, solid? It's opaque. I'm going to build it this way because I really, really want to extend it and have a long nail bed. I love that look. It's not natural. <laughs> it's not a natural look. So if you're going for a natural looking nail, this is not the look, but I just love that extended nail bed look. Okay, I'm just gonna have to switch it this way for a minute. And this is the angle that you, when you're doing a client, you're straight on and you can see it. It's all symmetrical, right? But when you're doing it away from it, it's not a natural position. I don't look at the nails like this for 30 years. I look at them like this. And I'm making it a little bit higher because it makes making the French easier Then I don't have to be so precise with the French line. Once I get this right, I can slap the new stuff on in any old way I want as long as this is exactly where I want it to be. This is called a reverse French. Okay, so I'm gonna do the cuticle now. I'm gonna go ahead and put a thin layer of foundation pink on all of them just to protect my nails when I wanna change it out. Okay, I'm gonna do three French. But when I do the French, I wait for them to dry. This is the reverse French. And then I just file and make sure that my free edge is nice and sharp and even. And the best way to do that is with a hand file. And you don't have to hand file it. If you do it without having to hand file it, that's great. You don't need to do that. Okay, normally I don't apply all my forms, but this is a reverse French, so you gotta. Did you notice, Karen Man, one of the videos I did recently, the pinky was crooked? No, I didn't. 
Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why I do like to form them up as I go. But right now I am needed to get it on because I am ready to go. So I'm going to bring in those colors that I made. That was the liquid monomer with some eyeshadow in it. Then this little blue one here is white with it pretty blended. Like I used an e-file to blend that as well as mushing it with the end of my brush. And then this is white with it not as blended as much. And this is the pigment itself, just little pieces of it. You, know, you can see it's all kind of broken up, just pieces. So I can grab little bits of it if I like. Okay. So it's a smorgasbord. Is that how you say that word? Um, I have a whole bunch of different things that I can choose from what I want to do. So let's start with the thumb. Now, because I've made my French already on there and I've made it nice and high, I can ply the product on wherever and however I want. There's no finesse or no style. And then when we file it, it will reveal the perfect French, which I hope. That's how you find out if you did any good, <laughs> is when you file it, when you're doing the reverse method. Okay, so I do like it where my points come right up to the side. I'm really picky about that for my Frenches. So I think I'm going to just throw those in there now before I get into the design. Or I could do it after. Maybe we'll do it after. Okay, so the decision is, which one am I going to do? Okay, I've got the clear monomer over here that's untouched. Oh, we don't need the pink anymore, but we do need the white. Okay, this is the fun part. This is the creative part. Now let's go really dramatic on it. So I'm going to do pure white. I'm going to pick up my bead and I'm going to dab it into the eyeshadow. And so I have a little bit on the end there. And let's just pop it on there. And let's get a little bit more on top. And I'm going to wet my brush with a little bit of monomer so I can move it around and see it sort of blend. Sometimes the monomer, monomer will wet it and break up the little bits of eyeshadow. So let me find my shape. I'm going to go long and you guessed it, pointy. Now that's really super thin. I'm just sort of getting my feet wet here. I haven't done this very much, <laughs> so I'm going to see what I like because once it's in there, what's acrylic? Once it's in there, it's in there. So I'm going to get another bead of white. You know what? I'm going to dip in first to the eyeshadow. Let's dip in first, dip in the white, and dip again into the eyeshadow. And shape. Very pretty. And I'm just going to see if I can throw some in there and see if I like that. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. Okay, so now I'm going to make it a bit higher. And when you file it too, you'll reveal different aspects of it. So I'm going to dip it in, dip it in, and throw it on the end because I need that length on there. Boy, that is long. Do I want it that long? Of course I do. Okay, so let's get another bead. That's, I think, too much in there. I'm going to get another white bead, throw a little bit on there. And I am going to smash it now into the side corners. Now, if you play with it too much, you're going to blend it in more and more and more, and you're going to turn out more of a blue tone. And that's fine if that's what you're looking for. But if you didn't want it to be one color, just be careful. The more you move it, the more it blends, becoming more of the periwinkle blue, which I absolutely love. This is that if you want some white in there, you're not going to see it if you keep blending it. Okay, now I'm going to make sure I got enough in the corner. I'm just going to put white in there. Make sure it's in there. Just plying it in there. And I'm going to take another bead of white and very tiny amount of blue because I think there might not be enough thickness right here. OK, 
Okay. That looks very cool. We'll see what it looks like when I file it. Now the pinky one, I really did want to make a solid blue color. And that is this one that I blended up and I literally just mushed it with the end of my brush. And this is also the one that I took my e-file in there with a teethy bit, turned it on like a mixer, like a cement mixer. And then I just blended it. So it was really, really, really blended, you know, before I lost my patience. Okay, so I'm going to take the clear monomer and I'm going to get myself a bead of this nice blue and there might be a speck or two in there that didn't get blended perfectly, but well, that was a very wimpy bead. Oh, the color is exquisite. It's so pretty. It matches your sweater. It does, doesn't it? I guess that's why I like the sweater. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, that is super. Yeah, it's 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 like in that one too. It's good. It's gonna be a neat set. I think it's gonna be beautiful. Okay, so let me just. I'm getting so impatient. I want to go ahead to the other ones because I know what this one's gonna look like. But I better finish it. I am in love with this color. It's amazing. I had blue eyeshadow because I don't really wear a lot of it. We did in the '80s. Oh, did you see the picture on Instagram that we posted, dear? <laughs> yeah, it was really cute. Yeah, that was 80s. And on my Instagram, we posted a picture of um, me in the 80s wearing blue eyeshadow with crazy hair. It was just showing the hairstyle before and after. The afters, my favorite. And the eyeshadow is like blue. We wore a lot of blue eyeshadow in the 80s. And when we wore it, too, we, we wore it. <laughs> So I'm surprised I had it. I must have been doing a video for it or something that I needed the blue. Oh, maybe it was our 80s video that we did, right? Uh, Can't remember. I don't remember. Are you just too busy working over there? I'm just looking at different camera angles. Aren't you going. just come here for the conversation? I wish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I did. I bought that for the 80s video. This is gorgeous. And it's nice and smooth too. I'm not seeing any specs. Yeah, I love it. And it's straight. It's not crooked. Really pretty. Yeah, super nice color. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous. Okay. So the ones that I wanted to French, I don't know which way I was going to do it, but I'm curious what it would look like. Let's just look. I've got to, I've got to try this before I do it. Because I was saying, remember how clear is really pretty? Um, with this the blue, but I didn't try it. Oh, you know what? I'm going to take this off because it's in me way and it's, it's dry enough, I think. Okay. Okay. So let's try on a tip because I don't want to ruin a finger just in case I don't like it. Clear monomer with the little bits of pigment inside the clear, how that would look spreading around. I don't know. In my mind, it's gorgeous, <laughs> but I don't know how it's going to look. Okay. So wait a second, I need a clear powder. Oh yeah, that's it. That's what it is. Duh. I need a clear powder. Mm. I wasn't prepared for that. Okay, monomer, clear monomer, no pigment of eyeshadow in it. And then the clear powder dipped in the pigment. So you can see the pigment in there. I'm gonna plop it on there. If you don't play with it, it gives it a marbly patchy effect. Even if you play with it. Oh my goodness. <gasps> oh, that's changing it up for me. I like it. Oh, and even if you wanted to add a little more. Oh, I wonder what it would look like if you just, oh, this might look terrible. This is where I ruin it. This is where I ruin it. Did I ruin it? Maybe not. I kind of like that. Are we going to sacrifice a French for it? I think we're going to... You're going to get rid of your French? No, no. Cover it? No, I'm going to use one of my Frenches for this clear edge. I do think it's cool. Let's just do it. I might Which hate it. Are you going on now? I'm going to... Ooh, that's a good question. I'm going to do this one. Okay. Which I might regret. 
but I don't know if I want to give up any. I only have five, four fingers here, three left. I'm running out of fingers. I'm going to do it. It looks pretty cool. Okay, so I'm going to get clear monomer, clear powder, and dip it into the pigment and throw it on. I can't resist. I'm going to do, again, clear monomer, clear, a little bit of white, and then dip. I'm going to put that here. Too much white. I'm going to take some of it out. bit of white, tiny, 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 and just see if I can just add that down there. Mm, okay, so here's the problem in design. I'm in love with it, but if I keep piling on the clear with the pigment, it's going to get really busy. I'm not going to see any clear points. So I think I have to cap this whole thing now in clear. Just let me check this here. But my French line, I'm not happy with because French line is determined by the pink of the nail plate area and the product that goes in the color of the smile line. And that's not complete. So I'm just going to take a little bit of clear just to make sure I bring home that French point up into the corner. When I used to judge competitions, that's what I looked for, was that point coming up into the corner to a nice, perfect point and even. It's really, really important. Love it. Okay, I'm going to leave it. So now I'm going to do this French. We're not going to do this one because we've already done that in the pinky. That's the solid blue one. So this one, let's just do this one. And if we don't like it, we'll add some extra. So I'm going to get clear monomer. And take up the white with the pink, with the pink. <laughs> I'm surrounded by blue. I don't know why I said pink. Okay, and I'm going to take this right up into the corner. Again, those little points. I was so in love with this one first, and now I'm just freaking out. I love that one over there, and I don't like this one as much right now. I'm disappointed in it. So how I can salvage it is, let me see if I can just pick up some and just bring it in and pull it through. Yeah, so I've got but a bit more thickness to add, so I will do that on the next layers. It's gonna be long. Oh yeah. I love it. Okay, it was, oh no, 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 no. I've lost track. Okay, stay focused. Okay, I wanna get this bead with the already blended. And again, remember I said that, you know, the French line was already done, so we could literally just smash this all over. We don't have to get crazy. As long as that pink is thick enough, we can do whatever we want there. Just smash that right Ooh, there. Okay, so I'm going to take a bead of this and I'm going to dip it because I think we need a little extra in there.
I love that look when it's pulled through like that. Really like that. So I'm gonna get a bit more and I'm gonna dip it again. And that's a bit much, so I'm gonna just get white and this one, plop it in there. Okay. Cool. Okay, I got one more finger to play with. So now I'm going to do this one solid, maybe like this one. So I'm going to do it like the thumb, but I'll do it as a full nail. Let's see how that turns out. Oh man, I sure love that one. Hope that one files up. Okay. I need to stay focused. I am really bad about that. Okay. So I notice how I didn't use this monomer at all. Hmm, maybe I should. Hmm. Nah, because I really liked the clear and the and the differences. So I'm gonna stick with this one. This is the clear monomer. Let's move this one out of my way. And I think I'll play with these two. Or the pure white. Oh, that would look nice on there. Pure white. Okay, let's do the pure white. That's this one. With the bits of eyeshadow pigment. And let's see if we can keep some of that whiteness. Let's stretch it out and over. Okay, I'm not going to worry about the cuticle. I'm really just focusing on the design right now. So let me pick up some white. Pick up lots of pigment. I may need a bit more pigment. Pop it in there. You can really manipulate it. See how I'm manipulating it and turning it around? I like that. Yeah. You know, this whoosh nice. of a wave, hair blowing in the wind. <laughs> That's cool. So let me get some, I think, more white. A little dabble, do ya? Now I just have to be careful. I don't cover the aspects that I like of what I just put down there. So if it's what I want, I think I will clear cap it to build my structure. That's really cool. Okay, I really like that. Turned out great. Okay, so I'm just going to fill in some clear areas. Just do my clear capping. To protect it to seal it and give it the strength because these this one's super super thin i'll just show you and then i'll do all the filing i'll just show you i'm gonna pop this off it should be dry enough and i can show you how thin it is it's super thin okay look at i turn that sideways put my hand out see how thin that is that's awesome it's you don't even need to file it it's got a great crazy shape to it <laughs> it is I like gorgeous the double, i love the double points at the end Oops. <sighs> oh i'm in love with it now i wish i did them all like that okay so you see how thin that is i still have to build the structure on this guy so let me just slap some clear in there and show you that's what i'm gonna do and then you'll know what i'm doing to all of them well they all don't need it but this one certainly does so i slap that clear in there Wasn't this one that was the one I was afraid to try and wasn't sure if it was going to look good? Wasn't this the one? I have no idea. Yeah, I think it was. Okay, so I'm going to do that to this one. This one a little and a little bit on this one and the thumb doesn't need it. And then we're going to file and reveal some of these beautiful designs. <laughs> so excited. One thing I did learn is, look at my table. Can you see that, Carmen? I'll move my towel. Oh, yeah, that's messy. Look at all those eyes, and that's eyeshadow. So heads up, don't use one of your favorite towels. Okay, so now I want to get going on the filing. So to, to take off your forms, you want to pinch, make sure it's dry. Pinch, you can loosen these little tabs. Pinch, chuck. 
So loosen the little tabs, pinch, pull under, chuck. Loosen your little tabs, pinch, pull under, and chuck. Oh, I can't wait to file these. Okay, so filing. You know, I'm not one of those nail technicians who spends a lot of time doing the precision. Look at this mess. Look at this mess on the side. I kind of look at it this way. I have to weigh out my time. And the idea is I want to try to do it as fast as possible. And I could spend time and be meticulous and not get any overspread. But uh, I can whip that away with a hand file or an e-file in a second. So I just uh, don't worry about that so much. So I do, when I'm filing, I start with my sides. I find my roundabout shape. This is going to be pointy stiletto. So I'm going to find my shapes and then I'm going to start shaping them up. I don't want to make this an e-file video, but I'm just giving you one little tip there. Let's get filing them. I do wear a mask. Wear a mask. Okay. And I am going to Edward Scissorhands this like crazy. Okay, here we go. scary part for a nail technician is filing the French line, hoping it reveals perfectness. Ooh, look at underneath. It's pretty too. Well, that does look good. Doesn't it? Mm -hmm. it? Gives us a glimpse of what it's going to turn out like. Yeah, that's true. Sneak peek. Hmm. Wow, that looks so cool. Okay, so the pinky is actually what I envisioned. That was my first initial idea. Let's make nails that look like that, I hope. And then we improvise. That's what I love about it. We can just improvise everything. It's so great. And, you know, when you do a design like this and you, you know, stumbled upon it and you, <laughs> you realize how much you like it, if you want your clients to know about it, either do some demos like tips that they can see or you wear them. If you wear them, sometimes when a client comes in that day, it doesn't really matter what she had or he had in mind. <laughs> they absolutely could see your nails and go, uh, I had something in mind, but I want that. <laughs> I used to do that all the time when I had a great set of nails, I would wear them and then everybody, new nail color, everybody would want it. Once they see it, right? Power of suggestion. Okay, that's boring. I'll figure that one out later. Let's get to the thumb. The thumb I think is gonna be really pretty too. Let's turn, I've only got it on a nine. Let's turn it up a little bit to a 12. And file this smile line. And hopefully it's smiling back at us. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Just gorgeous. Okay, I think we need some hand filing. Okay, so I'm just going to fine tune these up and shape them. It really does look at it matches my sweater. Yeah, really nice. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to fine tune them and then we're going to top coat them because I think we have to see that together. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Everything is just right in the nail world when you know you've created this mess. And this is what makes it worth it. Check this out. Honestly, I think I like eyeshadow better on the nails. <laughs> <laughs> Gorgeous. Oh, remember the one I wasn't sure about? The experimental one? Look at that. Mm, beautiful. That's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, see-through. I don't know if you can see my finger on that. Super not bad. Oh, Ashley, you can even, you can even, um, do it underneath a little bit to get that extra shine. Just gorgeous. And the pinky was the one I originally, that was my inspiration. This was the first one I thought of. And I am so glad that I experimented with the marbling. And of course you can do this with acrylic. I'm just saying if you didn't have that color kicking around and you might have it in eyeshadow, I'd like to see what I can do with some of the other colors. Let's check out the thumb. pretty. I couldn't be happier with them. Um, I'm going to want the other hand done. Although I did make these cute little guys match. Okay, let's nuke them and check out the reviews. Absolutely one of my top favorite nails I've done. I'm going to check out some more other eyeshadows. I think they're better on the nails than they are on my eyes. But I do like to do some constructive criticism just so I can learn from every set that I do. I like to make sure I have the nice smiley points on the side, but I kind of didn't pay attention on that part of the thumb. So, oh well, I'll learn. Also too, if I did this again, I would make sure my extended nail bed is more pointy. Now I did do that more on the thumb. I like the shape of that one better. But these ones could be a little bit more pointy. Didn't pay enough attention to that. Overall, I love them. I do have a video where we break down chalk. I talked to a chemist named Jim, and he helps me understand why you can and can't do it. Check it out. <laughs>